the coronavirus. I mean, Friday we had off, thought I was having school on Monday to have a meeting about what would happen if the coronavirus made us stay at home. And then before I knew it, I was staying at home. All my stuff's still at school. I haven't been back. I haven't seen my students. I haven't seen my colleagues except for Zoom, which really just looks like I'm on the Brady Bunch. Da, 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 da. So what do we do with this time? I want to offer two ideas. So this should probably be two videos, but I'm gonna make it one video and then that's it. Look, one, I think, one of the ideas I keep pushing uh, in the Instagram Live things I've been doing every day. So if you're not watching, I'm on Instagram Live every day at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with a different guest. One of the things the guests and I have been talking about is this idea that what if you really looked at this time as a growth period? So however long we're out of school, like as long as you're healthy and you're safe, what if you use this time to grow? What if you actually this was, if you think about it this way, if this was a gift to just stay at home, to learn, to get stronger mentally and physically and be a better person by the time you go back to school. So that could mean reading books on education. It could mean watching documentaries, watching YouTube videos, like figuring out what all those things that your students were talking about. So if your students are watching On My Block, like watching On My Block or listening to new albums or playing video games, could be connecting with your students through video games or through Zoom or through Google Hangouts to learn more about who they are so you can use that this year or next year and what you're doing. If I think about this time that I have at home right now, which Pennsylvania just elongated their break two more weeks, and I know some of you are already done school for the year now, instead of just worrying about this, it's how can we use this time to grow as human beings? And so that's just one thing I've been thinking about. And so I've been thinking for myself, like, how am I connecting with my family, uh, with you know my kids, my wife, my dog? Maybe I'm spending extra time in the garden. Maybe I'm spending extra time during the day praying or getting up and meditating or reading or exercising. And like, those are all things I can do from home. And so how am I amping that up to really take care of myself? Because this can be a really overwhelming time. I too, like many of you, have been freaking out about lesson plans and how to best handle things and communicating with families and with fellow teachers and get making sure students needs are met and like it's there's just some things you can't do because you're at home like no matter what you do like I can't walk certain students through lessons but one way that I found that has been meaningful I think so far because I can't see anyone's reaction and maybe that's a good thing is shooting green screen movies so every day but when I send out a lesson, um, I am making quick video on my iPhone with a, I have a, like an iPhone, I have a little road mic and a light ring. It's a little song I call Quarantine. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, after that musical interlude, let's jump into the day. Uh, no real like directions today. So all you're doing for the assignment today is just following the directions that are on Google Classroom. But a couple of things that I want you guys to know going into this kind of next week of, of quarantine nation here. One is when you're answering questions, gentlemen, I can see that you copied and pasted from someone else's assignment. Don't do it. It's easy work, man. Just stick with it. Do your own work so I can give you credit. I know there's a hundred different ways to do this. You don't even need that whole setup. You can literally just have a window, put your phone in front of it with some makeshift tripod made out of books or something like that. Something green behind you. Now, there are other videos online where you can use your iPhone. They can have you change whatever color thing is behind you into something else, but I don't do that. So I'm only gonna speak to what I do. But I thought I would just show real quick how I do this because I think it just makes it fun and it is a really a way to like, if I'm talking about this idea that's in my book of teach your class off, it's really a way to keep teaching your class off even though you don't have a class or a classroom or you know anything else. Like look, you can be business on the top, party on the bottom. So this is all that I do. I'm gonna make a really quick video about this and if you have questions, you can hit me up and I hope this helps you out. I think about what I'm gonna say first. I have my lesson in mind. And then once I firm up kind of what I want to say, but I'm used to just going in the school and spitballing, so I don't really have to like write a script, although some people do, write down what I want. And then I record this on my iPhone, like I said. When I'm doing that, I make sure that the green screen's behind me. I make sure that you can't see anything from the edges. 
and I make sure that I do not have a green shirt on or a green undershirt or anything like that or green hair because that's just going to be because it's going to show anything that is green is going to show up that whatever image you're putting behind this is going to show up on that. I made that mistake one year in one of those holiday videos and I wore a shirt with Christmas trees all over it and then they just looked ridiculous. So that's that's the life I lead. When you're finished filming this, you just export the footage from your phone to your computer if you're going to edit on your computer if you have a Mac um, or you can just edit it right on your phone and use iMovie on your phone and it works just as easily. Being image. So I find these by just typing in stuff into Google. So it could be classroom, it could be outer space, it could be the woods, it could be whatever you want it to look like behind you. I find that things that aren't too distracting work best as long when you're giving direct instruction. If you want something funny to happen though, you can just type in anything you want. So if you want to be in a fairy woodland surrounded by unicorns, you could just type that in and then just use that in your video. You then drag that over into your video section, or if it's on your phone, you just input it into your iMovie and overlay it, which means I would take the footage of me speaking and I would put it on top of whatever the green screen was so that my image is now going to show up and all of this green screen space turns into something else, turns into whatever I want it to look like. The thing I think is so fun about this, you can add music, you can add video behind you, you can have pop-ins, you can have, like if you're talking about the 1920s, make it look like the 1920s. If you want it to look like you're in space, make it look like you're in space. You could use weird props and stuff like this Fortnite mask that we have. And now you're in space, the final frontier. There's all kinds of goofy stuff that you could do like that in the video. It just makes it a little bit more fun. This idea is something that in the coming weeks, I'm really excited about creating content on because I think it'll just be more fun and even stuff that you can just use next year. So if you want to upload this on your Google Classroom next year as a, as it's something that goes along with assignments, I'm using it for students that might have a processing disorder, students that might be auditory learners or visual learners, so that I'm not just giving them direction. I'm instead showing them what I want them to do, or I'm explaining it in a way, in such a way that they can go back and listen to it later, and it's just making it more fun. So what if you made videos that were exciting or silly or weird, and it made students show up on Google Classroom every day? So if they took your regular lesson, you made this add-on piece that's a three minute long video that goes along with what you're doing, but instead of just being normal, you made it, you could be a cowboy, maybe. Ma'am. You could be a Fortnite character. You could be a pirate. Did you hear about the new pirate movie? It's rated R. You could be a ninja, but again, I warned you about wearing a green thing and with a green screen, it doesn't really work out well. You look like a failure is what you look like. Or you could use a puppet. My name is Lionel Richie, and I'm here to talk to you. There's a hundred different ways you could do this. I mean, the possibilities are endless. That's it. I'm not much of a tech guy, but you can start overlaying music. You can overlay movies on this. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. And it really just takes like looking things up on YouTube. So just search whatever it is that you're looking for on YouTube. But this is one of the ways I'm trying to build engagement to try and help my students. And, it, you know, I think more than anything, it's about trying to create an engaging classroom, even though you don't have a classroom. And so what would you do? Who could you be if you know that no one, at least to your face, is laughing at you, right? So to go in the school with Lionel Richie might be a little bit weird. When Lionel Richie and I are just like chilling at the house now, no one can laugh at me to my face. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? You always know. Yeah. That's it. Guys, if you have any uh, questions, hit me up. And if you come up with any great ideas, please let me know. I'd love to see what you're, what you're up to and you're sharing. And join us every day on Instagram while we're on this like weird school hiatus. 12 o'clock every day on Instagram. And we'll just keep learning with each other. That's it, guys. Teach your class off. Peace.